Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we'll look at creating a pattern in a pattern in Illustrator. And it's actually something that you can't do in Illustrator, but you can fudge it. So what I want to do is to create a pattern with these roses, but behind them I want a gingham pattern. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create the roses pattern and the gingham all as one pattern swatch. So we're going to create the border for our pattern swatch before we start so we just know where we're working. So I'll click on the rectangle tool, click once in the document. And for mine, I'm going to make it 600 by 600 pixels in size because I want something that is nice and evenly divisible so I can create those sort of background elements. So I definitely want something that's got double O's on the end, if you like, because it's just going to be easier to work with. So I'll click OK. And I'm going to give it a black stroke and no fill. And I'm going to place it up here in the top corner of the artboard just so I know exactly where it is. With it selected I'm going to target its top left corner so this is going to be the reference point for it. I'm going to make sure it's situated at 0x and 0y because I want it jammed right up in the top corner and I've just noticed that the size of it is not correct so I'm going to make it 600 by 600. It seems to have lost some sizing along the way. You just want to be really careful to make sure that things don't go wrong here. Go to the layers palette and I'm going to lock this down so that it won't move. It's perfectly positioned and we can start using it. So I'm going to arrange my flowers. I'll just bring the flowers up to the top of the document and let's go and put this flower in position first and it's going to be centered over the top edge of the artboard so I'm going to locate its center point which is just here and I want its center point to be right over that very top corner so that's x0 y0 so it's now positioned exactly where it needs to be I'm going to make a duplicate of it over here and then one down here and one down here. So I'll select it and choose Object Transform Move. We know that this rectangle is 600 pixels so I'm going to move it 600 pixels horizontally and zero vertically. I want the original plus the copy so I'll click Copy. Now I'll grab both of these and do the same thing, Object Transform Move. This time I want them down here Again, it's a 600 by 600 pixel rectangle, so they have to be moved in a vertical direction, 600 pixels, no movement in a horizontal direction. Visually check that they're where they should be. Click Copy so that we keep the original plus these copies. This one I'm going to put plumb in the middle of the rectangle. So I'm going to locate its center point here as a reference point, and the middle is 300, 300. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm happy with the flowers, but I need a gingham background. I'm going to have to manually create that. So I'll go to the rectangle tool, but first of all, let's just lock those flowers down so they don't move. Go to the rectangle tool and I'll drag out sort of approximately what I want my gingham stripe to look like. So I'm just going to sort of work out what it's sort of going to look like. Well, the width of this is about 17, so I'm thinking 20 would probably be pretty good. Let's just delete that. Let's now go and create a rectangle 20 by 20. I'm going to turn off my flowers so that I can just see my artboard as I'm working. I'm going to fill this shape and I have a color here that I sort of want to use. Let's go for this, but let's make it a little bit more blue. That looks pretty good. I'm going to move it up so that its top left corner is in the very, very top corner of this artboard. If this pattern's going to repeat properly, it absolutely has to be dead right to begin with. Let's do 0, 0 as the location of that reference point, making sure our rectangle is still 20 by 20, which it is. Let's just zoom in up here. I'm going to grab my color and let me just go and make that a global color. So I'll double click on it and let's make it a global color. I need a second rectangle beside this one. So I'll hold the Alt key on a PC option on a Mac and drag a second rectangle out to the side. I want to fill this with 50% tint of this color. So I'll go to Window and then Color. 
open up the flyout menu, click show options because this gives us our tents area. I'm going to make this a 50% tent. I need to make sure that this is lined up perfectly. So its top left corner should be at 0 and 20. So let's just go and check 0 and 20. It's in the perfect position. Alt or Option drag a duplicate away. This one should again be at 0 and 20. Make sure its top left corner is in exactly the right position, which it is. Now I'll Alt drag the final one into position. Its top corner should be at 2020. So let's just check 2020. It's in exactly the right position and it's going to be filled with white. So let's go and get white for it. So four little rectangles up here. I'm going to group them so that they don't move relative to each other. So object group. Now I'll just zoom back out because we're now going to fill up the rectangle that is our pattern piece with those squares. Select over them all, Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. I'm just going to use a Transform to move these across. They're going to move horizontally 40 pixels or the width that they were in the first place as a combined group. And I'm just going to increase the number of copies until I get all the way across my document. Click OK. Then I'm going to come down, same thing, Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. Yes, I do want to apply a brand new effect. This time when we're going to move down 40, the combined height of these objects, turn preview on, and we're just going to increase the number of copies until we get to the bottom of the document. Click OK. So that's what our gingham check is going to look like. Now, it's obviously right now above all the flowers. We're going to just pick it up and move it so that it's behind the flowers. Now this is a transformed object. We don't want to make this a pattern as it is right now. So we'll select it and choose Object Expand Appearance. This is what we've got here, lots and lots of groups. So we'll choose Object Ungroup. And again, Object Ungroup. So we want to get back to these little groups of four. That's fine. That's as far as we need to ungroup them. So let's just group them back up again. Object group. This makes life a little bit neater here. So let's unlock the flowers. Let's put the flowers back into position. Let's unlock the bounding rectangle. Let's actually go to the bounding rectangle and select it. For this to be a bounding rectangle for a pattern, it needs to have no fill and no stroke. So going to give it no fill and no stroke at this point. So we're now ready to go ahead and make our pattern. So I'm going to select over all of these objects, which is the gingham check, the flowers and the no fill, no stroke rectangle at the very back. Open up the swatches panel, just drag and drop the whole lot into the swatches panel. Let's move out of the way and let's test this pattern. So I'll create a new rectangle. We'll target the fill and go and apply our pattern to it. And just to make 100% sure, let's scale it. Object Transform Scale. We want to transform the pattern and not the object. So let's just do that. Got it down to about 35%. We can clearly see that it's repeating perfectly. I'll click OK. So we've created what looks to be a pattern within a pattern. We've got roses and we've got a gingham check. And all we did was make sure that both sets of elements stood alone as a repeating pattern. And then when you layer them on top of each other, they're just going to repeat perfectly. You just need to have your wits about you with something like the gingham at the back because it absolutely has to repeat. And if it doesn't repeat perfectly, you're going to get lines through the pattern. So start with a fixed rectangle, a rectangle of a known shape that you can work with and just go from there. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.